Welcome back to another episode of Introductory Organic Chemistry. Today we have a special episode. Today I'm going to tell you about the five worst smelling compounds that I made in my PhD. Now, a little bit of background. In my research, I mainly work with sulfur and fluorine. Here you can see some pretty looking molecules that I made. Now, you're not looking at the molecules exactly, but the pretty crystals that they form instead. And so mostly my chemistry has involved thiocarbonyls. So if you're wondering why I have some really obscure functional groups that we haven't talked about, it's because that's like what my research focused on. And so for this video, strictly I'm going to be talking about foul smelling reagents that I actually prepared. So ones that I synthesized. Not necessarily the first person to synthesize these. Um, a couple of them are already known, but uh, some of them are novel. So the first compound is uh, this isocyanoformethoxybenzene. If you've ever worked with these things before, you know that they're fairly foul smelling, but they have a unique kind of sweet smelling unpleasant odor. And you can like put them away, but they still tend to have a fairly strong smell. So while this one isn't the worst smelling compound ever, it's pretty bad. Like you, you don't want this out open on a counter. It's like really bad. And they have like a unique bad smell. And so if you compare this to like the starting material or even this intermediate, they're not very volatile at all, but this is a super volatile compound. So not, not too great to work with. Now the second compound is this really obscure looking N-thiocyanodibenzene sulfonamide. And here's a picture of it. Uh, the white crystals are what it initially looked like, but in air it slowly decomposed to this orange color. And so let me tell you the issue. So I had tried making this compound because we'd been making analogs of reagents like this and just testing their chemistry. And uh, unfortunately, when I tried to make this one, uh, it just made hydrogen cyanide gas when left in air. And so I have the ability to smell cyanide. Some people don't have the gene to smell cyanide if it's present, but I do. Like I clearly can strongly smell it. And so I'm working with this on the bench. I'm like weighing it out and I'm like, oh, oh, that's not, that's, that's like cyanide. And I realized immediately my stuff must be making cyanide. So I quickly like rushed it into the fume hood and breathed in a ton of air. Cause like, you know, I don't know how much cyanide it was. I don't know if I'm going to die. I just kind of wait it out. Hopefully it's fine. And it was fine, fortunately. But it turns out that another research group actually prepared this compound and they reported it about six months to a year after I made it. And it turns out that it's just air sensitive. So they just worked with it in a glove box and it's fine. So if you're curious about what that reagent can do, you can go check out their paper. Now, the next two compounds, compounds three and four, this pentaphosphine this is a very weird molecule. Even if you're an organic chemist, this is like super crazy looking and woolen's reagent here's a picture of woolen's reagent it's beautiful this is one of the best pictures i've ever taken so let me tell you about these so the phosphine it just smells awful i i can't even describe how bad it smells it kind of smells like burning plastic but that really doesn't encapsulate what it smells like phosphines have a very distinct awful smell and this one reeked even in like a sealed parafilmed shut taped shut vial in a secondary container with electrical tape taping it shut you could still smell it in the cabinet that it was in and even after like uh, several months of having this stuff stored i could see that some of the material had sublimed out of the vial that that it was in into the secondary container and you look at this thing like this does not have a low molecular weight this should not be like boiling off right but it, it, it awful to work with and so when i needed to make this compound uh, i made it because i needed to synthesize woolen's reagent as I was saying, I was working with thiocarbonyls, and so I wanted to see if I could make some selenocarbonyls. Now, unfortunately, I didn't have too much luck with this reagent, um, but the worst was working with the reagent itself. And so uh, this compound, just a tiny little bit of it, if you just like have a whiff of it, because this reacts with water in the air to make hydrogen selenide, it immediately attacks the back of your throat and like you feel awful and it smells bad too. Like it stinks, but it's like, ow, ow, oh, my throat, ah. And that lasted for like days. It was like having a cold or a flu and then it went away eventually, but it stunk so bad and it attacked my throat. Um, this stuff was awful. When we had to dispose of it, we had to like, like we put it with the rest of the organic waste, uh, but we added it at like the last minute so that when they took it, they, they didn't realize like how bad it was, but it was unbearable to smell this stuff terrible compound to work with. The synthesis to make it's kind of cool though. So the final compound, this is a, cl a fluorothionoformate. And so this compound, this compound, I tell you, this is definitely the worst smelling compound I've ever made. So I made three of these things with different substituents in the pair position. And, you know, 
if you've ever heard of thiophosgene, people might have scared you away from using it because they say it's really toxic. It is fairly toxic, but it's fine to handle. It's like an orangish red liquid and you can just like pipette it. It's fine. And it smells good, actually. It's like a guilty good smell. And same with uh, same with this chlorothionoformate. This is like a good smelling compound, but it's like, ooh, I probably shouldn't be enjoying that. It's the forbidden fruit. Um, however, once the fluorine's on there, just completely different. A slight whiff of it. And it's like, it, it's like a little bit stinky, but it's really acrid and like offensive and like attacks your sinuses, but it stays all day. You go to fresh air, still there. And like, it was a full intensity smell that lasted literally the entire day. Like I had worked with it in the morning and it smelled it a little bit. And by the time I got home that night, still the entire night, I could smell that compound. And it just is like so acrid and unpleasant. And I can't describe why. I made an analog with a benzene ring in the pair position to this benzene ring, and it's still the exact same thing, no difference. So this is an awful, awful class of compounds, and no one should ever work with these because they just are so unpleasant and so toxic to work with. So those are the five compounds. Hopefully you've enjoyed me reminiscing over my PhD stinky compound experiences. If you like this format of video, leave a like, subscribe, and comment down below saying which one you thought was your favorite. Have a great day.